Welcome to the Loopy Pro video manual. This is a series of videos getting you up and running with Loopy Pro as fast as possible. In this video, we're going to be spending our time in the top right hand corner and having a look at the settings. There's quite a few in there, so let's get going. Starting with clip settings. The clip setting screen allows you to set the global configuration for clips, but these can be overridden by color, by the individual clip itself, or by the action level if necessary. The clip settings is actually divided into four different sections, starting with playback, then we have recording, then audio settings, and finally you have gestures. Let's start with playback settings. The following in playback settings defines how your clips play and stop. As previously mentioned, these can be overridden. But the first one is play and stop quantization. This is to configure the synchronization intervals at which loop play and stop events occur. Non means play and stop loops immediately with no delay and no configuration. Master means it will play and stop in sync with the master clock cycle. Loop, which is the default, means that it will play and stop in sync with cycles the same length as the specific loop. And finally, custom brings up a bar and you can change it between different beats, different bars, all the way up to 32. But by default, it's set as one bar. Phase lock loops keeps the loops in sync with the timeline even if they're not playing, meaning that if you stopped a loop, it's like muting it and the indicator will carry on going around the loop even if it's not playing. So as you can see here, I've got the orange loop and I've got the yellow loop. The yellow loop is not being played. As we hit play, you can see that the indicator is still going around. If it was to tap the yellow loop, then it would come back in at 12 o'clock because I've set it that way. However, if I gave it a second tap, it would come in at that point. The reason for this and why mine is being different to yours is because in clip settings, we're on custom one bar. If we change it to loop and we go back, you can now see you can now see it plays the entire loop and then turns off. If I tap it again, it waits for the entire loop and then comes back on. I can tap it twice to tell it to come off immediately. Time stretch loops is pretty much self-explanatory. It'll adjust the loop's playback rate to fit the current tempo of the session. And underneath that, you've got three options. Never do this, always do this, or auto. And auto is to perform a time stretch only if the one shot is longer than one bar. Then we actually have one shot quantization. You have none where it will play immediately without any delay. The master, it will be synced to the master clock of the session. And then again, you can customize it with a slider, starting at one bar in the middle, going up to 32 bars and going all the way down to 1 16th of a beat. By default, it's set to none. So when you hit a one shot, it's instant. The other alternative, which is quite useful with one shots is hold. You have an option here, which is hold to play one shots. So when you let go, it'll stop playing. Some people prefer one shots like this and it's a great option. By default, it's off. So if you just tap the one shot, it'll play its entirety. However, if you've got a one shot where you only want to play a sample of it, you hold it down and then when you let go, it'll stop playing. Next, we have fades, both fade in and fade out and they're off by default. So we can actually put in a couple of different milliseconds all the way up to 120. That's two minutes, by the way, both for a fade in or a fade out. Now, if you change this, that will change every single loop. If you only want to do a fade in or a fade out on one loop, you can do that. And the way you would do that is swipe up on any loop. So I'll swipe up on the yellow one here, and then I will actually go to playback settings and I can change it there. That will only change that one loop as opposed to all the loops. If you're changing loops within the same color, you even have what's called a loop boundary crossfade. Now it's set to 50 milliseconds as standard, but you can have it as nothing or go all the way up to 250 milliseconds. The next option is record when empty. So if you tap on that loop and it's empty, it will go straight into record. This is the default. You may wanna switch this off if you're using things like MIDI controllers and you wanna select the loop first before you hit record. The other option that's switched on as well is is pause clock when idle. When you turn the last loop off, the session will pause and will start up again when you trigger a loop. And the last one in the playing section is second quantization. When you activate an action a second time during a quantization count in or count out, then if this setting is enabled, then Loopy Pro will begin a second level one bar quantization interval. If this setting is off, the quantization will be canceled and the action will be performed immediately. So now we've done the play settings, let's have a look at the recording settings. Again, all of these are customizable per clip 
or per color, but right now we're looking at it as a whole session. The first one is retrospective recording, and this is something completely unique to Loopy Pro. With most loopers and loop pedals, you tap the button or pedal to begin recording, and then you tap the button or pedal a second time to close the recording off, and that is your loop. With retrospective recording, Loopy Pro is always recording. It's listening to what you're doing, and if you set a loop as four bars, you can tap after the recording and it will save the previous four bars. This is a game changer for people who are using instruments and haven't got access for their hands to touch Loopy Pro at the point of recording, but you have within that next four bars. So you don't have to worry when the recording's happening as long as you capture the last four bars or two bars or one bar, however you've got it set. Now, when you turn this on, a new option becomes available and a couple of other options are canceled out. Loopy Pro is continually recording in a buffer set by the master clock length. So if you set a loop for one bar or four bars or eight bars, it's gonna record that amount constantly. When you trigger the recording, which will be after you've played, Loopy Pro will capture that buffer and that will be your loop. With retrospective recording, it's set as quantized, i.e. the last four bars or the last cycle that you've set, or you can set it to a medium and that will capture the immediately preceding audio. But be aware, this will have no quantization. It's probably best to keep it on quantized to begin with, unless you need it to be on immediate for some very specific reasons. Let me give you an example of this. Now I only pressed once, which was after the four bars. It was always recording, and you can see it's added it onto the green one there, and it's not played it, it's kept it muted. <laughs> this is fantastic if you're trying to figure out things like solos, or you've just played the perfect riff and you want to capture it. Be aware that retrospective recording fundamentally changes the way you use Loopy Pro, but it also means that you can be a lot more relaxed with recording things when it comes to timing and making sure you press that button exactly when it needs to be. You don't have to, you can do it afterwards. Now, as I said before, if you turn retrospective recording on, a couple of things are faded out. So we'll turn it back off, and as you can see, auto counting and count out quantization are the things that you can't do in retrospective recording because you're capturing the moment after you've played. So in normal recording mode, you have the option for auto counting and count out quantization. Now you've already seen this when I hit record. All I've got to do is record once and then it will automatically go around the bars that I've set. So for example, with the hi-hats, you can see here, we've got this set to four bars. And as I hit record, it'll record that track in, and then I don't have to tap it a second time to close the recording on any other loop other than the first one. However, if you've got this set to master or you've got it set to loop, you can customize it so you don't have to press the second time as long as you can hear the click, the metronome, which is the BPM of the session. So we have those four options. We have none, which means start recording immediately without any delay, master, start recording in sync with the master clock cycle, loop is start record in sync with this loop or master if empty, and then finally you've got custom and then you can dictate what that is. The default is master as it's set to the session. Again, you've seen this with count out quantization. So if the loop is four bars, it'll record those four bars and then it'll stop recording, but it'll carry on playing. And you have the same options there of non, master, loop, and custom. Now, another default that's on is length quantization. This constrains the loop lengths to multiple or divisions of a bar. The next one, which is off by default, is the loop audio threshold recording. As you can see right now, my voice is bouncing up and down and there's a little arrow there. If I turn this on, then what this will do is it'll only record when it goes beyond that point. This is fantastic in a loud environment, or again, if you haven't got access to Loopy Pro with your hands, maybe you want to play something straight away and it records at that point. Really useful if you don't have things like MIDI pedals as it can record you automatically. So right now I've got this set and I can close this off and I'm about to tap this now, but I need to be quiet. So I'm gonna tap this now and you're gonna see the option around the blue circle, which says waiting for threshold. <laughs> Now, as soon as I cross that threshold, you can see it recorded. As soon as I cross that threshold, you can see it recorded. Now, there we go. Now you can override this by tapping on the loop itself, or the alternative is now I have the loop stopped. It just heard me then, and the loop went red, and it now says waiting for clock start. Because I've stopped the session, but I've actually triggered the loop to begin, it's now waiting for me to hit play on the session. 
and it'll start recording straight away. If you want to cancel that at any point, you just tap the loop and it'll go back to its empty status. Loop audio, threshold recording, and one shot threshold recording is very useful in loud environments or if you're looking to record something as soon as you hear a sound. Now it's off by default for the loop audios, but it's on by default for one shots. And of course you can adjust this triangle by moving it up and down depending on where it's going to be. This is all dependent on what input you've got, what microphone you're using, or if it's a guitar, or whatever you're using for audio. Now the next two are incredibly interesting because you've got record intro and record a tail. Loops are exactly what they are, loops. They can only go and play the four bars or the two bars that you've recorded, no more or no less. However, Loopy Pro can, in the form of recording an intro and a tail as well. So when you enable record intro or record tail, record audio intro will play before the loop starts and it does require a count in to happen. The audio will be a special audio that's recorded before the actual loop itself. Same with record tail. And this is really, really cool because if you wanted to end a loop in a specific way and it doesn't just cut off at the point when you stop it, you can record an ending. Again, another special piece of audio that's saved within that loop. So on the blue loop, I've recorded a tail. So if I play this now, you're gonna hear a little bit after the loop. If I stop it, you had a boom at the end, and that's actually the loop itself playing the tail. Simultaneous recording is exactly as it sounds, so you can record more than one loop at the same time. Really, really handy for bands, really, really handy if you're recording two instruments or you're recording a guitar and a vocal on separate loop tracks at the same time. There's an entire section for after recording, as in what happens after you've recorded it. So with each loop, it's default to go into play mode, but you can actually say, well, just stop the loop, or change it to overdub. Some people like to go into overdub by default. Let's say you're making a beat, you put down the hi-hats, then you put down a kick and a snare. You'd have to wait an entire revolution to put that kick and snare in. Whereas with overdub, you can put that in straight away. Same for harmonies. If you're creating a harmony line and then you wanna do another one straight afterwards, we'd want it to be in overdub mode. Of course, you can overdub yourself on top of the loop, but this is after the initial recording. By default, it's set to play. The next option is called phase preservation. And this is whether to rotate new loops so the start point is aligned with the current musical phrase. It's on by default, but if you disable this setting, Loopy Pro will perform no adjustment at all to the start of the loop will be the point at which you began the recording. Now, something that I've got switched on is called wait for playback. If the clock for the whole session is paused and you hit record, it won't record straight away. It'll wait for you to start the session manually and it'll record then at the same time. The next one is auto loop detection. And this means Loopy Pro will automatically detect and trim the first loop in the session. Boom. Book. Now, when you have this enabled, it will automatically do it for you, but you can always manually override this. And this is this tiny little waveform in the corner here. When you tap it, it gives you a couple of options from loop detection. So it figured this one out pretty well, and I just click apply. However, if I were to get rid of this and I was to start the loop beforehand with silence and then record afterwards, it will automatically trim it down for me. Now that's pretty amazing that it can do that. And if it's got it wrong, you can go in and it can show you loads of different variances, including the entire recording. But if you figured it out straight away, you can just click apply. And when you put your second loop down, the trim icon will go away. The last part of this is auto end detected loop. With this setting enabled, Loopy Pro can automatically detect a loop of the given length. So let's just say you put down four bars for the session. It can automatically detect when those four bars begin and end. This allows you to record with Loopy Pro completely hands-free. But you must first either say Set the session length or eclipse preset length and it's recommended that you set a rough tempo to assist in the accurate detection
The next section is audio, and Loopy Pro will detect what audio interface you have for inputs and outputs. In this section, for the clip settings, we're talking about the clips themselves, therefore the outputs. Basically, where are the loops going? Now, by default, Loopy Pro is set to stereo. As you can see right here, it's set it to output one and two. But you can change it to whatever you want. Of course, this can be overridden at the color level. The last option here is gestures. And when we go into it, you can actually say what the gestures do. So for example, a tap, a two finger tap, a swipe, a swipe up, a swipe down, swipe left, swipe right. Then you've got long swipes on long press and also a merge drag. Some of them, of course, are set up by default. So for tapping, it's things like play and stop. That's the default action. Record if empty is set for a single tap as well. You can go through this option. Let's just say we're gonna go swipe down and we can adjust it and say whatever you want it to be, which is really powerful and at a high level of customization. And the very last setting in clip settings is restore defaults. We can put Loopy Pro back to its default for all the clip settings just by pressing restore defaults. Of course, it gives you a warning just to make sure it is what you wanna do. Now, all of that was just in clip settings, but don't worry, that was the biggest menu. The next one is color groups. Nice and simply, what colors are we using in this session? You can also add colors at this point. You can go into each color, and this is where you can change things at the color level. So we can change all the playback and all the recording settings and all the gestures and all the follow actions and your volume, your balance, your pitch, your speed, just for one color. And this will override the generic clip settings. So maybe for example, the orange one is where you do all your drums, your beatboxing, all your percussion sounds. And you know you want certain things like the volume and the balance to be a specific way for that entire group. This is where you do it. Remember, if you add colors, then of course they will appear here in the mixer. And you can actually get to them by tapping the little circle on top of the mixer just here. It's the same menu. The next option is MIDI control. And I'm not gonna go too deep into this today, but this is where you can control all your MIDI settings, where you can bind things together and add MIDI profiles. Right now, I've got the AudioView Studio plugged in, which is my audio interface, that's what you're hearing me through. And it knows that that's got MIDI built into it. So I can go into it and we can talk about MIDI and MIDI enabled timestamps and all that kind of stuff. We have a virtual MIDI as well. And if you've got things like Bluetooth MIDI, you can see in the top right-hand corner, if we click there, this is where we can do things like the MIDI jack, or if you've got anything that's Bluetooth based, where I've got things like the WIDI Master, the WIDI jack, or if you've got Bluetooth devices, like an Air Turn, like the Boss FS1 WL. The next one after that is synchronization. This is where we can synchronize Loopy Pro to other things. Synchronization can be done through MIDI Clock or Ableton Link, which is quickly becoming a trustworthy protocol. You have input offsets, and again, through synchronization, Organization, this is where you can pair your Bluetooth devices. The next one is the metronome, and you've got four different sounds that you can hear. The first one. The second one is like a hi-hat. The third. And our fourth one is clicks. The metronome, of course, is synced to the BPM of the session, and you can enable it here, and you can also adjust the volume of the click. What's really clever is the mode and the output. So it's either always on or only on count-ins and the output channel can be different from the loops. So you could have a different output channel going to some headphones so the audience doesn't hear the metronome, but you do. This is totally dependent on your audio interface and how many outputs you've got. Next, we have system settings and this is all to do with Loopy Pro itself. So for example, you could tell it to play in the background. So if you swipe up and got out of Loopy Pro to go to somewhere else like a synthesizer, it would carry on in the background. Or if you were using something like AUM, Loopy Pro will still work. This option is is orientation lock and iPads have this already but you can lock the orientation of the iPad so if I've got it in landscape or portrait it will stay in that mode sample rate which I've got down as 48 kilohertz by standard and you have your buffer duration and your file format you can even go as high as 32 bit and the buffer duration is very useful to change certainly if you've got a lot of effects and a lot of audio going through one nice little touch with loopy pro is the ability to use save points so loopy pro can save your session at certain intervals but be aware this will take up extra disk space final one which can be a godsend if you're plugged into a huge pa resetting the audio source sends what this does is it resets the audio sends to zero this is to avoid feedback based on whatever system you're plugging into so we've got the help option Option. and hopefully we've been helping you with these videos along the way so if you have give this a thumbs up <laughs> but what you can do is you can go through the open tour when you first boot up loopy pro it takes you through a tour and if you close it by mistake or you want a refresher it's right here open tour of course you can close it at any time clicking the x in the top right hand corner of the little tab you've also got the manual the tutorials the community and the roadmap with some credits and if you scroll down
Two options are MIDI Learn and Bluetooth devices. And we'll be going over MIDI Learn in a completely separate video. In the next video, I'm gonna show you some advanced recording and playing options. We've discussed them here today, but I wanna show you how we can fully utilize count in and count out, retrospective recording, threshold recording, and intro and tail.